How's it going, everybody? Uh, wanted to quick apologize for my video yesterday being a little bit low on volume. The take ended up being really good, so I don't really want to re record and YouTube is letting me boost the video. But anyways, the timer hit zero. I'm going to reveal my spoiler. Uh, if you're here and you're new to the channel, I'm Ghoul. I play Final Fantasy CG competitively. I have topped events. I tend to do a lot of meta analysis and deck reviews and generally just try to spread competitive knowledge about the game. If you like that, feel free to follow me, and if not, here's your spoiler. Go on, have a great day. With that out of the way, anybody that is here to hear me talk, uh, this is the spoiler. It is Leslie. He is a Category 7 job lackey. One drop forward, 3,000 power. When Leslie enters the field, you may discard one card. When you do so, choose a forward opponent controls. Return it to its owner's hand if the discarded card is Category 7. Also, draw one card. So there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, this is a rare. And when I saw this card, I actually didn't think that much of it. I'll be honest. I thought this seemed like a card that was clearly very good and limited. Probably would see a little bit of constructed experimentation. Maybe in something like a Bart's Boko. But overall, it seems just fine. It's very hard for a one cost forward to be bad. Especially one that does have upside. That said, the upside does cost more. So it's like a pseudo 3 uh, 3 CP forward with a very low power. That's not ideal, but I wanted to kind of go through and see what the potential use cases for this are. So, first of all, I actually think it's just generically okay. Uh, so right here, I pulled up uh, all of the cards that just generically return a forward to your opponent's hand in water. So if we look, Titus has this effect as 6 CP EX Burst. Uh, we have, these are all in forwards on summons. Obviously you're competing with Opus 1 Leviathan, which probably isn't an amazing place to be, but leaving a body behind is very nice, admittedly. Uh, the closest one that I found is actually this Ramada. In theory, this costs one more, but you gain a crystal back, plus you have the ability to use the special. But you don't have the ability to get the refund. And Ramada has seen competitive experimentation. Um, particularly as a finisher for decks playing Glacella. You can go Glacella, Ramada, Ramada, Glacella, give the Ramada haste two points of damage. And use it as a way of closing games. This was very common when you were trying to be able to kill wind out of nowhere, right? So you don't have that ability with uh, Leslie. But... I don't think that, that holds it back by itself. Um, Mog is 2 CP but has conditions. You have to find a way to draw two cards over the course of a turn. Realm is only for yourself. Jekt requires you to, to attack and cost 5. Uh, Tonagiri requires a party to attack. This Onion Knight sort of works. Uh, Urian J also does return a 4 to the opponent's hand, but you do have to have a monster of cost 2 or less. Iza Yoi counts your ninjas. There really aren't any... I thought there would be an Opus 1-3 drop that just returns a forward to your opponent's hand. And apparently the cost for this effect on a forward is actually more like 4 or 5 CP. In, in like 5 CP with downsides, right? Like this one is a 5 drop that literally requires you to pay with only water CP, right? So I think there's actually an argument that if you're looking for this effect on a forward... You really can do a lot worse than a one than a three CP bounce, even with a very low power, and that's before factoring that there's actually advantages to being a one CP forward. You have things like Bart's Boko, you have cards like Puck, cards like uh, I don't know if Zondi or uh, Sid Privia work with it, but. Being a 1 CP forward is really not a bad place to be. Um, even cards that seem very average. Uh, I, th I think, for example, of cards like Elena. This card's actually seen a lot of competitive experimentation, in part because she costs so little that it's very easy to make her work. And I think that that's a great spot to be. Uh, it it's very easy to slot a 1 CP forward, try it out. If it comes up in a couple games, that's great. If it doesn't, you just don't play it. And I remember going through the water pool and re realizing how just shallow the mono water pool actually is. I, I think there's a decent chance Sildra doesn't survive the start of the new set. 
but if it doesn't, having a 1 CP forward to pair with your, after your Geomancers really is not bad. Uh, if we go to all the one-drop cards that are not backups, because if you're getting a backup, you're going to get the, the Geomancer, let's be honest. I, there really isn't anything that's on par with this. We have cards like Umaro, which is like a 1 CP 9k if you can get a crystal. But you got to generate the crystal, right? And that's a lot harder than just discarding a card from your hand. We have cards like Porum, which is like pseudo-untargetable, but dies to cleave. Viking, which like draws a card when it dies. Um, Ultros is really interesting, but Ultros doesn't get anything on entry. It's only if you play it from the deck. Uh, Andrea Rodea is, I think, a very slept-on card with a lot of potential. It's probably the closest comparable, given that it's a one-drop, three, you know, 3k that wants Category 7 synergy. But this needs a Category 7 character on field to pair with it, and Leslie doesn't really care. Leslie will just do his thing, right? So I think the more you look at it, kind of the better this card looks. Uh, Leo is obviously very conditional. Uh, Oil Boil is probably the closest as far as like sheer, like draw, discard one, like kind of cycling cards out of your hand, but it's only a mon forward, a, you know, damage three. Nothing really does what this card does, which is really nice. It's a good place to be. Uh, is it, do I think that that's going to be a, a, a super all-star? No, I, I really don't. But, like, if you go to the water forwards from... We'll go back, like, the last five sets or so. And, I mean, there's really not a lot of these that would see the inside of a deck generically. I mean, Porum obviously is very good. Mog requires crystals. Realm plays around with crystals and monsters, but you need to want those effects in your deck. Lena's generically good, but requires crystals. Ceramobius requires crystals. Uh, Tidus, sadly, is one of the better generic cards, even though I really don't think this card is that good. <laughs> Like, we keep, we keep going. Fusoya requires a specific deck. Marsh is really expensive. Vesvi is good, but obviously goes in one exact deck. Um, Alfino is good. So I do think... Man, this Kraken's so bad. Draw one, discard one. For 5 CP. Jeez Louise. Yeah, like, I I think there's a very real chance that this is one of the best just generic water cards you can be playing right now, which is very interesting, I'll be honest. So let me know what y'all think. I hope to see y'all in the next one. Again, if you're new to the channel, I'm Ghoul. I tend to do a lot of meta reviews. I'm a competitive player that's got multiple tops. I'll go over my own deck profiles, go over everyone else's deck profiles, give my thoughts, and try to explain what different decks are doing well, what decks are doing poorly and uh, kind of should keep you guys up to date on what what's good and what's bad at the moment, and hopefully we can kind of continue to work through trends together.